Now, this is the result of Carnot cycle. That's fine. But how are we going to relate this with entropy? Look, efficiency is equal to W upon QH. Efficiency we have found out as 1 minus T1 by T2. Fine. W is equal to Q2 minus Q1 upon Q2. I mean Q2 is the energy of... Uh, uh, I'm writing QH as Q2. And uh, I'm writing QC as Q1. Because I have written TC as T1 and TH as T2. That's fine. Won't make a difference. But generally, we'll see this uh, subscript 1, 2 rather than H and C. So, here, from here, you can see that 1 minus Q1 by Q2 is equal to 1 minus T1 by T2. 1, 1 gets cancelled, and you see that Q1 by T1 is equal to Q2 by T2. When Clashes saw this, something struck in his brain. And that gave birth to the term entropy and the expression of the entropy. Now see, Q1 by Q2 is equal to Q2 by Q1. That means Q2 by Q2 by T2 minus Q1 by T1 is equal to 0. Fine? See, what's happening is you had four, you, you had Four paths, one, two, three, four, four, four steps in the process. Now this Q2 by Q2 by T2. Suppose this is a physical quantity. This is a quantity Q2 by T2, Q1 by T1. There's a general physical quantity with Q by T. Now for these two steps, these were adiabatic. You remember? So Q in that is zero. This Q2 by T2 is in the first step and Q1 by T1 is in the second step. So whatever this physical quantity has the value Q2 by T2 in the first step minus the second step is zero. That means in a cyclic process, if you're looking for Q2 by Q by T of each step, now what you do, you calculate Q by T for this step. You calculate Q by T for this step, Q by T for this step and Q by T for this step. And you add them all and reach to the same position you started with. So when you complete that cycle, that Q by T, sum of all the Q by T, considering sine, will be zero. Now in the first step, Q by T is Q2 by T2, because temperature was constant. If temperature is not constant, you have to go for integration. But in this case, temperature is constant. So on the net amount of heat given was Q2. So this Q by T, the, the, if otherwise you have to integrate, otherwise what you have to do is, you have to integrate this dQ by T. Now, integration of dQ by T, if temperature is constant, will be simple integral dQ by T. And integral dQ is Q, whole Q2, the sum, the net amount of heat given in the process. So, if you are calculating integral dQ by T for this step, that is Q2 by T2. If you are calculating integral dQ by T for this, this is an adiabatic process, dQ is 0, so that is 0. You can write here as plus 0. And then if you come to this step, then because the heat is re being released, you have to take sine into consideration. So plus dQ by T is minus dQ by T1 here. So you calculated integral dQ by T added here. Negative sign appears because the sine of Q is negative, is, is minus, is negative. And again for the last step, because it's an adiabatic process, the so dQ by T is zero. If you add the integral dQ by T for each step, it is summing down to zero. This tells you something. This tells you that integral dq by t is a state function. Because a state function is a function in which if you restore the state, the value is that the value the value of that state function is the same as as when you left that state. For example, Internal energy is a state function. For idle gas, internal energy depends only on temperature. So you went from state A to B and you came back through another path. When you came back to A, then the value of state functions will 
be restored. I mean, the value of state function will be the same as it was before because the state is same again and state function by definition have the same value in the same state. And this state function and path function we studied in the beginning of the chapter. There shouldn't be any confusion in identifying that if you are coming back to the same point and there is no change in that, then that means that quantity is a state function. Now see, if I define ds is equal to dq by t, if I added ds in all the four steps, then that ds is coming to be zero. That means if ds is zero, that means there is no change in s. That means s is a state function. And that's why ds is equal to dq by t. Now looking at this, clashes identified that there is a physical quantity that is equal to dq by t. Because when we are summing dq by t and coming back to a, that physical quantity, when the, the change in that physical quantity is zero. That means if you sum up ds through all the steps, that is zero. That means s is a state function. So from here, clashes defined a quantity which is equal to which whose differential is equal to dq by t and that quantity was represented was given a symbol s and this was called as entropy so this is your entropy and that's how we got entropy as equal to dq by t but this whole process is reversible you remember the isothermal process was a reversible isothermal process, adiabatic process was reversible adiabatic process. So this Q is reversible. That's why in the formula in the beginning, we used DQ reversible. This cannot be any other process in which the, the, that process, if that process is irreversible process, then this result will not hold. Why? We'll see in a moment. But this result is holding because it's a reversible process and, oh, and if this result is holding, then only dq reversible by t can be a state function. And if you are using dq irreversible, then dq irreversible will not be a state function. And that will not be equal to entropy. So whether your process is reversible or irreversible, irrespective of that, entropy is always and always equal to q reversible by t. Whether your process is reversible or not. Because if you don't use reversible process, this summation will not be equal to zero. If that is not equal to zero on coming back to the same point, that means this q by t is not a state function. Fine. Now, to make it a state function, this has to be zero. And this is zero only for reversible process. That's why dq reversible by t is defined as ds. So entropy, net entropy will be, s will be equal to integral ds. And that's always going to be integral dq reversible by t. Now let me write it once again, the formula for entropy. Entropy will be integral of small changes in entropy. And small changes in entropy is equal to dq reversible by t. This is the bottom line of the whole discussion. Fine. Now the significance of this is that even if your process is irreversible, suppose you are going from A to B through an irreversible path. And suppose another path is a reversible path. This is 1, this is 2. You are going through path 2 that is irreversible and the path 1 is a reversible path. Then even if you are going from a state A to B to calculate entropy, what you will do is you will assume the process to go from through path 1 to the reversible path. And then you will see in that path, how what is the amount of heat that is being released. And depending on that, you will calculate entropy. So even if your actual process is irreversible, you will assume the state to be changed. Because once the process has occurred from A to B, whether you go from 2 or you go from 1, it hardly matters. Because you have changed your state from A to B. So even if you are going through irreversible path, you will assume that the process is happening or occurring through reversible path and assuming that path, you will calculate this integral dq by t because in that path, that dq reversible is dq. Whatever the dq is, that is dq reversible. So if you go and integrate dq by t in that path, only then you are going to get, get entropy because entropy is dq reversible by t. Hope you understand this. And when we will solve few problems, it will become more clear. 
but for time being this is how people on earth came to know that there's a quantity q by t which is supposed to be a state function and clashes the named it as entropy and we define entropy like this.